All right, everyone, welcome back uh, to our coverage, live coverage. There's the president of Joint Base Andrews in Maryland arriving back, uh, at least close to D.C., uh, tonight, getting off of Air Force One. One of the last times, by the way, I mean, you know, he's still got five more months that we'll see this, <laughs> but still, you know, I remember the first time he got off of the plane when he took it from Chicago to D.C., and I happened to be anchoring, and um, I just stopped and said, you know what, there he is on Air Force One. So, one of the last times. But anyways, uh, it was a very emotional night for many Democrats, a very emotional night uh, for America. The president arriving back in Washington after delivering a rousing speech here tonight in Philadelphia, the Democratic National Convention going on. Back with me now, Congressman Brad Sherman of California and my political dream team. So, a lot of people took on Donald Trump tonight, Congressman, uh, including Michael Bloom Bloomberg, the man Tim Kaine who is running for president of the United States, and on and on and on. Let's listen to Mike Bloomberg, and then I'll get your reaction. We must unite around the candidate who can defeat a dangerous demagogue. I believe it's the duty of all American citizens to make our voices heard by voting in this election. And if you're not yet registered to vote, go online and do it now. This is just too important to sit out. Now, we've heard a lot of talk in this campaign about needing a leader who understands business. I couldn't agree more. I built a business, and I didn't start it with a million-dollar check from my father. Because of my success in the private sector, I had the chance to run America's largest city for 12 years governing in the wake of its greatest tragedy. Today, as an independent and an entrepreneur and a former mayor, I believe we need a president who is a problem solver, not a bomb thrower. Someone who can bring members of Congress together to get big things done. And I know Hillary can do that because I saw it firsthand. So clearly part of the strategy tonight was to paint Donald Trump as someone who you couldn't trust, he was erratic, he didn't want his hands, you know, on the nuclear codes and on and on and on. What do you make of that? Well, I think Donald Trump helped us tremendously in that. I mean, obviously it's part of our convention, but for him to declare that he wants Putin to hack American emails and interfere in the American political system is just mind-boggling. I mean, Mike Pence was so desperate, he, he came out and said, if Putin were to involve himself in our political race, he, he threatened Putin with consequences. So you've got Trump inviting him to do something, and Pence, the sane one, saying, of, uh, of course, we would take umbrage about uh, a foreign hostile power trying to inter interfere with our election through burglary. Cyber burglary. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was uh, Newt Gingrich or someone. That, correct me if I'm wrong. Who came out and said, "I think Donald Trump was joking about this," and then Donald Trump doubled down and said, "You know, if you have Hillary Clinton's 30,000 emails or whatever, hack them and, and bring it to us." That was. Is yeah. that concern? I, I just. I just. I, 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 I do want to point out one other thing. When Richard Nixon wanted to rifle through the files of the DNC. He hired good American burglars and paid them well. <laughs> oh, my God. Right. Donald <laughs> Trump is even oh outsourcing a Republican burglary job. Oh, my God. Kaylee. Russian oh hacker. Yeah, well, well, first of all, I, I'm not sure how you can engage in espionage of deleted emails at a server that's been wiped entirely clean by the former Secretary of State. What Donald Trump was saying is that if Russia has these emails, in fact, they should hand them over to the FBI, which I think we could all agree would be a good thing. And, and where you're right. saying that he's encouraging espionage. The only person who's enabled espionage is the former Secretary of State who put American secrets and possibly American CIA lives in desperate conditions. She was irresponsible with national security information, and it's horrific. I think that wild. Is that not down? No, that's not good today. I mean, I... I, I I've done this before, too. I've actually sometimes put myself in a pretzel trying to defend a position. But what Donald Trump just did was look into the camera and invite Russia to hack the top diplomat of the United States of America. I mean, that's, that's treasonous at best. But even more importantly, what you saw tonight to relate this to this, 
But, but Congressman, I actually thought more concerning than that was saying he, when he said today we were going to get rid of the Geneva Convention because it was outdated. I mean, just some of the things that he says just take you aback. But what you saw tonight is what, what Democrats are making it plain to see for Americans. Look, building Trump Tower and determining the intensity of the lights spelled in your name is a lot different from sitting in the command center and saying we're going to take out Osama bin Laden. So whatever you want to say about... Barack Obama's foreign policy, Hillary Clinton's foreign policy, they've made real decisions. They just haven't bankrupt Atlantic City. Those are vastly different things that they've done in their lifetimes. Record speak. Congressman, thank you so much for joining us. Thank I you for having me. Congressman Brad Sherman, who is from California, a senior member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, uh, giving us some very vital information with your experience. With thank you. you so much, everyone. My dream team is going to stick around. The congressman is going to uh, step out. Uh, stick with me. We're going to uh, have a lot more live from the CNN Grill here in Philadelphia. We're just getting started.